many of us are transitioning from a lower realm to a higher realm. It's very much likened to going from muggle world to Hogwarts. Some people will forsake this, this invitation. Some people will choose to stay with their family and their church and the matrix and all of this because they're just not ready and they feel very comfortable where they are. And some of us are being asked to give up all ideals, all beliefs, and all emotions in order to transition to become someone else. It's a transformational process. You are at one o'clock and you have a bridge coming out of one eye and a bridge coming out of the other eye. So this means you're torn in two. You're not sh exactly sure. You know you're going to go over a bridge over troubled waters, but you don't know which bridge to take. And because you know, here you are in a higher realm and you have a wand and you know you're going to be leaving people behind. You know you're going to be leaving friends behind. And it's, it's scary. I know it is. It's very scary. If you look at um, five o'clock, there's a man with a top hat with a cigarette in his mouth. This reflects some people who are dominated by a matrix and they are learning. It's a time of learning, of expanding your mind like a top hat being tall. At eight o'clock, there's an angel with two wings. The two wings reflect one wing going toward a horse, which is power. The other wing going toward releasing the souls within you that are emotions, beliefs, and attachments. So when we forgive and let go, it's like we release um, souls that are imprisoned within us. Now you are also at 12 o'clock and you're showing yourself a cell phone. And it's, it's like you're telling yourself that you are being distracted and th these distractions are keeping you from the holy dove. Now you do have a bird. Now this bird looks a lot like a bald eagle and he has the Vesicus Pisces crying a tear. I've told you guys a lot about how we are tears of joy in the lower realm. The higher realm is your higher self, which is the fire. In sacred geometry, when the one and all was split into two, it does create the tear. But when the two doubles into number four, it actually makes a fire. The fire and the tear makes the number eight. And this is reflective of the Holy Spirit, spirit dominating the flesh. And so if you give up and surrender and become an empty vessel, spirit will lead you to your destiny and from womanhood or girlhood to godhood. And it does call for us to leave everyone behind because Jesus at 12 years old left everyone behind and then came back powerful. Harry Potter at 12 years old left everyone behind, came back powerful. Dorothy Gale was 12, left everyone behind, came back powerful. The number 12 reflects leaving the, the age of time, leaving a lower realm, the 12 hours in a day, 12 months in a year. The 12 disciples reflects the 12 tribes the 12 zodiac signs. So we leave the number 12 behind. We go to a place like Hogwarts, the mansion of many rooms, our temple. We go to this temple and we expand from a little tiny house to a big house, from a limited flesh to marrying and merging our flesh with spirit in order to grow and become adept and to transform. It is a natural process and many people forsake this process. And when they forsake the process on the spirit realm, it's as if they were miscarried. So n denying a natural process and growing naturally and going with divine order causes a miscarriage or even like an abortion um, on the spirit realm. So many people do forsake their power. You do have the moon energy and the moon reflects sin. The moon used to be called sin. So we were all born in sin and we shift from the moon, which is flesh to the sun, which is spirit and spirit sun is at 11 o'clock with the two birds. So there's, you know, spirit speaks in such ancient symbology. It's really strange, but shifting from the moon to the sun is a, is a, just a natural shift of flesh to spirit. Now we have a lot to talk about when it comes to the gematria codes that came about in your art of seeing. These gematria codes speak first and foremost about the number 11. So look at three o'clock where someone is under a hat. 
This is like Azkaban. Azkaban in Gematria means prison planet. On the hat, it says 1111. And on the steering wheel, it says 1111. The Gematria code that came about was the Twin Towers. The Twin Towers looks like the number 11. 911 is 9 plus 1 plus 1 equals 11. And every American president since 911 has 11 letters in their official name. So there's a significant um, uh, communication about this number 11 to not just you, but to the entire world. Now, Jesus Christ equals 11. So the energy of Christ came around the Twin Towers, and we were going through a gateway. It was like a gateway that opened for all of us. It's like we went from the number 2, the number 11, the Vesicus Pisces that doubled into the number 4, um, because 1111 equals 4. And uh, so this was an invitation for us to marry and merge flesh with spirit and to move away from a lower realm and to go through a gateway, which is escaping the body of Christ, becoming the body of Christ, and then escaping a lower realm. So the symbol of someone being under a hypnosis, being under a spell, holding the 1111, the twin towers, this lower realm, being invited to Hogwarts, being invited to step into your divinity. It's an invitation that many of us took and some of us forsook. The birthing, the rebirth uh, on the spirit realm is very much like the physical birth and the embryo and these geometrical shapes. And so when we forsake our power, we basically abort our future self or miscarry. Now, Spirit wants to tell you a little bit more about who you are through the numbers that was sent to you in Gematria. So let's talk about that as well. You had the name Naomi, and Naomi has 130. Notice at 7 o'clock you have 13. So the name Naomi and the number 13 <clears throat> are connected. You also have a lot of rain and and floods. So Naomi, rain, and floods, and the number 130 are all in your piece. What we have to understand about the number 13 is that number 13 is the escape from this realm of 12, Azkaban. And the 12 hours in a day, 12 months in a year, 12 zodiac signs, 12 disciples, 12 tribes, da 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 da, da. To escape this realm is to become the number 13. So that's what that means. To unweigh her head, we are going to live forever, yes. So you are at one o'clock lifting up the hat, wanting to lift up the hat of someone in a prison planet. And notice the steering wheel also looks like a cross. This is the four directions and the four seasons. This is the, the steering wheel is the prison planet, like the wheel of time, like the reincarnation wheel. And you are lifting up the hat saying, oh, you, you can live forever. You don't have to be in this lower um, simulation anymore. So you're kind of the savior and the rescuer and the protector. There also seems to be some covert thing that occurs on this realm where our life force is being stolen from us in order to make a god or deity immortal. So it's so important for us to leave the lower realm and follow spirit because there is an agenda to make you forsake your own rebirth and abort or miscarry yourself. We must kind of disintegrate. It's like the nothing on the never-ending story. We become nothing and there's nothing but a grain of sand left. We rebirth ourselves into a more powerful realm and to become nothing is to become everything and to become no one is to become everyone. And so there is a lot of going through the eye of the needle, unloading your camel, um, uh, and, and going through this Visicus Pisces in order to merge and marry with spirit. It is a marriage and it is a death, both. It's a rebirth, a transformation, it's all of it. You seem to be the goddess Astera. She is the goddess of the white rabbit. You have three right white rabbits and she is the goddess of spring, the spring waters, the umbrella, the childlike nature at six o'clock. This is an energy that you are meant to be. And the, the good thing about Astera is she is the protector. She is someone who awakens someone like out of an egg. Notice that a crown looks like a broken egg. To give someone their divine crown, not a, not a hat that, it, that seems to be um, the false 
crown. And Ostera is also the triple goddess, meaning um, going from youth to middle age to the crone, to the old older woman, but maintaining a magical childlike heart, which is why the child at six o'clock is wearing the golden crown and holding the hand out saying, rebirth like a broken egg, wear that broken egg on your crown, allow spirit, the golden age of Aquarius, the holy dove to dominate your mind and follow and be under the protection umbrella of your divine self because Ostera has the ability of being self-indulgent and worrying about self so much that she does not grow. She's late for the party, which means she does not grow to her divine and she forsakes her crown. So do not forsake your crown because you're meant to be this protective goddess of rebirth, of rain and water and clouds. Notice at 11 o'clock, there is a helmet and the there is a bird um, that makes a shape over the helmet. Hell and Mott were two gods of the underworld. So you're going to be holding like a staff power over the underworld and dominating it with the energy of freedom and, and divine order, the holy dove. I encourage you to look up all the gematria numbers and the symbologies and ask spirit for more clarification. If you liked this video and found it significant, please like and share and comment. Remember that your actions are a prayer and because you are the goddess of the umbrella, maybe go out and buy yourself an umbrella as a symbol that you are ready to protect what is sacred and that is your divinity and your spiritual birth. Do not miscarry and do not abort.